public like to address it? Are we <coughs> start on this end and then? Um, I'd say I'm looking forward, and maybe our group is looking forward to working with the Christ Commission team, and this committee did a nice job. And I would just uh, like to reiterate the importance of um, a few points. Um, Urban Land Institute was just in town, and so they that ULI aspect of how they looked at this, one of the key things I took away from it is they saw some events moving from North Park over to what I call Pier Park. So when I look at the Pier, the pier Project, I look at it as, as Pier Park. And so that whole area, that whole uplands, that park area is key. And so um, in the Chambers presentation, which Ed Montaneri sits on as the peer task force head of the chamber. Part of what the chambers, what Chris, Mont and Chris uh, Steinecker said, listen, can we just agree on one thing? No restaurants. We don't need any more restaurants. And he's right in some ways. We have four more restaurants open up the day walk. Beach Drive is full of restaurants. We got a lot of restaurants, but we kind of want a family restaurant or something that is different when you're sitting out over the water or even in the hub. So. Just remember that when you chair the task force at the chamber, the chamber might have misguided some of this information and got us where we were confused, and there's a disconnect there. And then that programming aspect of what we want out there might be in a conflict with what the chamber's looking for, according to what the task force said at the last meeting that you and I were at. So I'll bring those, those comments to the table. And let me just mention, at, at that uh, task force meeting that we had in the chamber. Uh, those were Chris Steinacher's uh, opinions. He tried to get a vote to agree with him. Yes, but we didn't We didn't have a vote. We didn't take a motion. I don't agree with, with that. You know, we had a marketing study done as part of the Peer Advisor Task Force, and it was clear of, of you know, what, what should work out there and what should not. Thank you. You know, I find that sure. on the film and everything. Sure. Yep. I just commend all of you. This is hard work. And thank you for what you're doing. And I think your product is going to be very helpful for the city. Yeah. Thank you. Great. I'd just like to say the same thing. Appreciate you all serving. And uh, we need to have community support and community input. And I think that's, this is great. I'd like to thank you all for doing that. Good. Thank you. Uh, yeah, uh, I've got a couple of points I guess I'd like to bring up. Uh, and I'm sorry, I, you know, I missed some of the meetings. The, uh, does the city have a to-do list right now to generate some reports? We had talked about some type of cost analysis, like a business model, and, and what the subsidy was before over the years. Um, so is there anything on the table now that the city's working on for the next? There's, there's a fair amount of information. We'll let the new administration guide uh, how that gets processed. Um, you know, some of it's been released already. You know, that would be just the financial analysis, the engineering analysis on uh, different cost alternatives, utilizing smaller peers and no retail around the pyramid. But uh, beyond that, there's probably additional studies that need to be done and as identified in, in this report. So there's nothing. Um, And the, uh, and the, I missed, uh, probably, you guys probably covered this uh, earlier um, last week, but the um, the survey, which implied that it would cost $70 million, uh, not $70, but uh, more, if it costs more to refurbish the pier and keep it. Um, going back to the original budget numbers from years ago, and it was said that we needed $50 million to repair the approach, is that number still, uh, um, was that number accurate? I don't know if I can answer that. That, that was a number from 2003. So, uh, you know, I think there's some tremendous information in, in that report done by the engineering firm Parsons Brickerhoff, which is still a, a great viable uh, firm locally. Um, and I, I think uh, there's, there's great information in there. Uh, that being said, at, at 10 years old, clearly there's a lot of um, updates. 
But, and at the time, was that just the approach? I mean, because really the pure building, I mean, technically the pure building actually is not um, needing to be replaced by itself. The, the approach has to be. It, it, the focus was on the approach. Okay. And the, the, the condition of the existing you know, 1,500 pilings. And, and Leonard, if I could add, it's so dependent on what kind of roads you built out there. And yeah. So until, until you were specific about what what that access road would be, how wide, how long, how long, all that stuff, and any number is, is just by the side of it. Yeah, that initial budget had just I think four and a half million for renovation of the pier and everything else. <coughs> Structural stuff. Uh, but, uh, something that, like that. that four million was actually as part of the uh, the TIF uh, interlocal agreement with the county. That that I don't believe was even um, that four million specifically wasn't referenced in the Parker Brickerhoff. That was the uh, part of that initial uh, TIF funding allocation, which has been amended three times since then. Uh, the initial one being in 2005. So in any case, the uh, sort of fast forwarding, uh, there's about $46 million in the current uh, capital budget. And of that capital budget, um, uh, studies, uh, including some awareness, can be utilized out of that. So uh, based on the last experience, that uh, the actual project costs themselves, including demolition, was about $37 million. And um, these activities are going to take um, reasonable amount of money to get done and it's money well spent, but that that actual construction budget really shrinks every day that goes by, not including the fact that the costs just to issue bonds on things like that are going up uh, every quarter right now. So there's a there's a compression in the budget, no, no doubt, as time goes on. And is there in, in, in anywhere in the report is there for and I'm speaking um, I'm just speaking for myself, but on behalf of those people who sort of just wanted everything to stay the same. Is that, is that on the table in the report as far as, hey, as, at least for a baseline to work off of, if you just rebuilt the approach as is, everything the same size, kept the pier open as is, what, what's the cost um, to float around in the press for that option? That's the $74 million. Well, there's a, yeah, there's a 74, <laughs> the same size approach, and then a reduced approach that's uh, 40, 45 or 46 million. So it was 74 million for the, to replace everything as is. As it is, 100 foot wide, yeah, which is uh, generally people agree that that's probably not necessary. And I don't recall if it was a 60 or 80 foot, I think it was a 60 foot wide approach to arrive at the <coughs> 50 million dollar. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. essentially cut it in half. 50 yeah, million, 50 feet wide. Our, you know, our had a long talk yesterday, were a little, and, yeah. and, and, and the, every, cost for this whole thing. It's all about the bridge. Right. The bridge is where the big money is. It just to have it, how tall, how wide, the mass is where you spend the money. And it, but at the end of the bridge, you know, it's the road, it's the extension second end of the northeast. You're gonna build a building, whether it's eight hundred feet out of a thousand, and it's not dramatically more expensive to build that building there than it is on the uplands. Uh, so it's 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 really so about, you have the case for <clears throat> well, no, even if you, it does, doesn't matter where you put that building to some extent, the money is still, even if you're only going to have a 500-foot long approach, if you built a 50-foot long, 500-foot long, 50-foot wide, 500-foot long approach, it's half the cost of what we're talking about. And you put a curly cube building there that has a restaurant in it, so there's, there's a, a ton of options. Um, but option, but just just for I guess for the record, so to do everything exactly as is, I mean without the final quote, but roughly seventy four million, just to say okay, we're just going to rebuild the exact same approach, same road, same apron. That and that does not include. Correct me if I'm wrong, but I don't think that included the thirty nine thousand retail around the apron. That's correct. There's substantial. You can maintain the pyramid, but um, there's substantial code issues. Uh, have to raise the ground floor. Uh, it's just that simple. Right. Um, so uh, that changes your stairwells, elevators, and, and, and the numbers contemplated by the engineering department, whether it was the 74 or the 46, uh, took both of the took that into account. So you would have a revised elevation. You'd be a, a minimum of three to five feet higher as you enter the building. Uh, may 
rendered the first floor useless, but it did not include what is today about 36,000 square feet of uh, retail commercial. Right. right. But really, it's the apron underneath that was the expense to build retail on top of it. Uh, correct. Yeah. Because on, on average, requires a pilot yeah, the, the shell on top is not expensive. Right. Yeah, the, the, okay. the perimeter shell is not expensive for that retail. It's only the it's it's making something of that bridge. Okay, it's then the my bridge. Uh, yeah, like right. I said, it's, it's all the bridge. It's all the bridge. So, my, my final point would be what is the committee's recommendation to for utilizing this, this the existing pier, which I believe is air conditioned, and the approach, which is not been condemned or anything as far as being using it for a parking lot or opening it up as a viewing center. I mean, what, what is the record being? It's going to sit empty for a year and a half. Um, is that the record? What do you guys advise the mayor to do while, while we come up with a new final design? <coughs> we haven't. We haven't addressed <coughs> that aspect of. Like, Should we throw them some ideas or tell them? Chamber came up with, a, with their. Yeah, on that. We discussed it at the chamber. Mayor, Mayor Elect Reisman has his his view on on the pier, uh, on the on the fence, and uh, he stated publicly that he would like to have that fence removed and to have let public uh, let the public have access to uh, the complete pier. Uh, well, at, uh, short of the building. Yes. Just one recommendation. Why don't we, um, especially if people want to explore the commercial subleasing of it, why not lease it for a year with a, with a lease that can be canceled at any point when the new design is just just as office space or whatever you want. Somebody wants to lease it for a year, then we come up with a new plan, um, at least you're making some money. You mean inside the building? Yeah, lease the whole building out for the next year. I think that would be a, something for the administration to take up. After they take office, I just lay in that, that all the equipment's been taken out. You can't build a restaurant or start throwing equipment in. And it's, it would be very expensive to mm -hmm. have a one-year lease. Right. It, it would be. It would be difficult. Prohibitive almost. Because you could have a food truck from the business man. Yeah. <laughs> and you could have a viewing operation yeah. and a hot dog vendor, but at least you wouldn't be paying twenty thousand a month in security. Whoever leases it would be responsible. So even if you're leased at a dollar a year, um, you're coming out ahead. The chamber voted to leave the fence across the front and not come out there. That's what we voted, right? Ed. We didn't take a we took a vote that we should put some plants in front of it, put some descriptive stuff there, right, and not open the head. That's what the chamber voted. Right. We wanted a, a more attractive yeah. termination. Right. Can we get that guy back out there that goes like this? <laughs> <laughs> anyway, just, just just for the record, as as a citizen of St. Pete, I would like to see it open, even if it's empty, to be able to go up on the roof and just to empty whatever. It would, it would at least it wouldn't look like an abandoned eyesore. Um, and if it requires one security guard walking around in there, or if it was only the roof and the elevator and nothing else. That would, that would be my personal preference because who knows how long if this process ends up getting delayed. I know everybody wants to fast track it, but if it gets delayed and delayed and delayed, let's try to make the, the, one, the best point of the entire time, the point of the, the survey that went out, was people want to see the city. It's a platform in the air to see the entire city of St. Petersburg, and it costs next to nothing to have that. Let's use it while we have it. That's my recommendation. Well, thank you. Bud, everything for us? City of Tampa <clears throat> decided they wanted to have an art museum and they hired a world renowned architect and he came up with some pretty fancy designs and the process stumbled forward from running up bills and Dan Laurio, when she came into office, terminated that process and started over again with uh, a local architect and built a really first rate building that houses beautiful art and lets art be the, lets art be the focus. And several of us, Bill Ballard first pointed that out to us, several of us have felt that we hope that's the model that's going forward here, that this second process 
will produce something that the public likes, that's more consistent with our history and with our culture. Uh, it can be built within budget. When I say that, but I don't think the lens would ever have been built within budget. And what you folks have done is begun that first step. And so I'm really comfortable with the report you're making. And I sure hope the next group takes that report to heart and performs the way all, everybody in this room thinks they're going to perform. So I want to add my thanks to all of you for participating. And Ed, I especially want to thank you. God love you. You have been chair of these committees over and over and over again. And anybody that was on that original task force for a year and a half. And Ed at one point said to me, I want my life back. <laughs> <laughs> and then he keeps on volunteering. Uh, special thanks to you, my friend. Well, thank you. Thank you, bud. And uh, thank you all for, for coming and participating. We've got uh, Pastor Murphy still on the phone. I, I uh, wanted to see if, Pastor, are you still there? Do you want to make any uh, comments?